blessings abound, my brother and sister. This is Superintendent Janice Battersby of Shekinah Worship International Ministries, Shekinah Worship Center, and I'm welcoming you to another installation of Insights with Sue. And I bring you greetings from our pastor, Reverend Dr. Maria A. Seaman. It's a pleasure to welcome you to another portion of this exciting series, Escape the Coming Night. This is a 43 lesson series by Dr. David Jeremiah, and we're studying the book of Revelation. Now, I'm gonna focus on one particular lesson tonight, and that's lesson number 39 called The Great White Throne Judgment. However, there are 38 other lessons that we would love to have you listen to. Now, what these are, these are about, say, up to half an hour. It's a bite-sized portion of the particular lessons that we've been studying. We do it in a group called ETCN, Escape the Coming Night, and we do it on Zoom once a week where we delve into the book of Revelation. Now this study takes us through that book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and it gives such a comprehensive look at the book of Revelation, a book that many have not read and even fewer understand. However, once you get an understanding of this book, what a blessing it is. It ties the entire Bible together. The purpose of Christ's coming and his return. Now we're getting near the end of the book of Revelation, but what I'm going to do is give you just a, a synopsis of what we've been studying. However, we have these little portions in podcast form, and you're most welcome to download it on Google, Stitcher, Apple, and Spotify under Real Knows Real. Now on Stitcher, you should type in Dr. Maria Seaman and you'll get our particular Real News Real podcast. But like I said, there are 37 of these out there other than this one that I'm doing right now. And it takes you right through what we've been studying. Now our lessons, our official lessons are about two hours long. But let me tell you, this is the third year that we've been doing this study and we're about ready to start again. Now, I don't know when you're gonna be seeing this particular recording, but today is October the 21st, 2021. And our plan is to start again in January of 2022. So if you'd like to be a part of this study, then send us an email at swim at logic.bm. Swim, S-W-I-M at logic.bm. And we'll reach out to you and let you know where we are by the time you're hearing this. And if you'd like to be a part, you can order study books, study guides, and join us and be a part of this. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna give you a little summary of where we've been in the book of Revelation. We're basing our scripture for this particular lesson on Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. I'll read that and then we'll just chat for a little bit. I've got my notes and I'll just share what we have learned. So the book of Revelation was written by John the Apostle while he was imprisoned on the Greek island of Patmos, and he was imprisoned for preaching about Christ. Now, while he was on that island, he received vision of the last days, and he was told by God to write it down, and that's what we're reading today, 2,000 years later. Now, he was also given a warning to the churches, the young new churches in Asia Minor that were starting, they were building, just having learned the gospel of Christ and, and they were spreading the news, but most of them were slipping back into some bad habits. And so John had to write on behalf of the Lord. The Lord wrote through him, sent these letters to these churches telling them to get their acts together or they would lose their ministry. Now, John also received a vision of Christ and all his glories. Many of us know Christ as a babe in a manger and a savior on cross. What they don't see is him in all his glory. And this is what the first chapter of Revelation shows us is Jesus in all his glory with power and might. Now John's vision shifts from this third chapter of Revelation to heaven. It goes from earth to heaven. And our understanding is that within between chapters three and four, the rapture has taken place and the church has now been transported to heaven. And from chapter four through chapter 19, you see the judgments of God being poured out upon the earth. We see praise and worship around the throne of God, but then God starts to pour out his wrath 
on the earth with seals and trumpets and vials. And I'm not going to go into everything there because it would take way too long. But all I'm going to tell you is there is such an upheaval in the earth. Right now we're going through a global pandemic and people are pretty fearful and concerned about what's happening now. That has nothing for the judgments that God is going to pour out upon the earth, upon those who have rejected him. But even during that time, there's an opportunity for salvation for the Jews that did not accept Christ as Messiah the first time that he walked the earth. To those who have never heard and rejected the gospel message, there are going to be evangelists, 144,000 going out and evangelized to them. Now, what we study tonight is the fate of those who have rejected Jesus Christ. And when I say rejected, I don't mean just saying no. They never chose Jesus. You see, there's no fence sitting. People have heard about the mark of the beast, that there are those who will worship the Antichrist, who will receive a mark of 666 on their hand and on their forehead. What exactly that 666 is, we do not know. But as we look around now on the earth today and we see this global movement that's going on for people to think globally, for, for government to be pushing for everything to come under one umbrella. That umbrella is going to be the Antichrist. We're seeing the shadows and the foundations being laid in place now. And there are those that are going to buy into all of it. But even those that don't necessarily buy into all of the Antichrist, if they haven't chosen Jesus Christ, they're going to wind up at the foot of the great white throne judgment. Now, our understanding is that after the rapture, the saints are judged at the judgment seat of Christ, and they're rewarded based on what they did on earth and the motivation by which they did it. They're rewarded. We are rewarded for our works. However, after the thousand-year millennial reign of Jesus Christ, after the rapture, there's a thousand-year millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Then comes the great white throne judgment. And at that throne, there's only going to be those who have rejected Christ who stand to be thrown into hell. There's no easy way to say it. So I'm going to read the scripture, and then we'll, we'll chat about it a bit. And like I said, coming from Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15, and I'm going to read the New King James Version. And here begins the reading of God's holy word. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades judged each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And here ends the reading of God's word thus far. Well, like I said, this is not something that is a pleasure to talk about. And so we're just going to chat about it a bit just so that you have an idea about what we learned. Now, Dr. Jeremiah opens up this teaching by saying that standing at the great white throne, judgment is not going to be like a typical courtroom experience. There will be a judge, but no jury, prosecutor, but no defender, and a sentence with no appeal. You see, again, we have to remember there is a difference between the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne of judgment. At the judgment seat of Christ will be the saved dead from the rapture, the tribulation martyrs, those who were killed, beheaded during the tribulation because of their professing Jesus Christ as their Savior. They will not accept the mark of the beast. And so they will be killed, many. I'm not saying all will be killed. Some may die of starvation because they don't have the mark of the beast. They can't buy or sell food. They may starve to death. There will be wars and famines and 
like I said, global upheaval. People will die, maybe not necessarily in this way, but there will be those who will be martyred, who will be killed for their faith. There will be the Old Testament saints, and there will be the raptured saints. All those will stand at the judgment seat of Christ. And like I said, their works are going to be examined, their motivations, and they will be rewarded accordingly. However, we understand that apart from the judgment seat of Christ, there will be the great white throne judgment. Now, working our way through this scripture, it says that he saw a great white throne and one who sat on it from whose face the heaven, the earth and the heaven fled away. There was found no place for them. So earth and heaven are going to respond to this person who sits on the throne. They're going to flee or even melt away. Now the question is that where will this judgment take place if heaven and earth flee? And we really don't know where the judgment, the great white throne judgment will be. It may be in the midst, just like how the Spirit of God hovered over the earth. This judgment will take place. God knows where. We don't. But all we need to know is that it will take place. And the great white throne judgment is a place where we don't want to wind up. Dr. Jeremiah says that the earth will flee away and that there will be no sinners in heaven. So it will take place in heaven. In John chapter 4, like I said, he saw the throne of God and there's worship going around that throne. The great white throne judgment will not happen there. That's where the saints are, where the angels are, where there's praise and there's worship. There is not that judgment. That throne is wherever God intends for it to be and he knows. Dr. Jeremiah broke down those three words, great, white, and throne. Great meaning the infinite one. There is none other than the Lord, than Jesus. Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. White, divine holiness, purity, justice, and throne, majesty. All that encompasses that throne on which will sit the judge who will judge and condemn. I'm telling you, this is, it's a heavy, heavy message here. It's not something to be taken lightly. However, it's unfortunate that people are taking God lightly, Jesus. Light, it's all about love, 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 love. Love wins. They have no understanding that God is a just God. And as much as he loves, he must condemn that which is evil. And, you know, we likened it to a parent. You have a child. We know that children aren't always good. They don't always behave well. But if you are a responsible parent, you're going to show them love, but you are also going to show them justice. They will be punished when they must be punished. They will be reprimanded when they need to be reprimanded. That is a good parent. That is a sense of the Lord, how God is loving to please him. And if we sin, he has created a way for us to get out from under the condemnation of sin. But for those who do sin and don't confess and repent, there will be judgment, harsh judgment. And so here we have, again, the great white throne judgment. And he talked about the person at the great white throne judgment, Jesus Christ himself. John 5, 22 says, the father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the son. And Jesus deserves to judge us. He died and shed his blood, became a curse by hanging on a tree to remove the curse that God first put upon mankind in the Garden of Eden. God cursed Satan, he cursed the ground, and he cursed his creation. Jesus Christ removed that curse by becoming the curse for us. He earned the right to judge us, and he will judge us. He will judge the quick, or the living, and the dead. Those who are living spiritually, and those who are dead spiritually. The judgment seat of Christ, and the great white throne of judgment. Which throne are you going to stand before? See, we make these choices now. We must choose before we die, or before the rapture. After that, there is no more choosing. Those standing before the great white throne judgment, small and great. It won't matter. It says in verse 12, and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. Whether you're rich, 
for, whether you have power or none. You have not chosen Jesus Christ. If his blood is not evident in your life, you will stand before the great white throne judgment. So don't get so caught up in power and money now. It will mean nothing when you stand before the great white throne judgment. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The purpose of the great white throne judgment. Why is there the great white throne judgment? It's for the passing of the sentence. The crime's already been committed. You've been found guilty. The great white throne judgment isn't there to find out whether you're innocent or guilty, whether you're a saint or not. That's already been established. The great white throne judgment is to pass the sentence. And it says the books were opened. Now, it does say plural, books. And so Dr. Jeremiah did a bit of speculating on what those books could possibly be. And he said it could be the book of conscience or the fact is for seared. Like when you sear something and, and we likened it to someone with third degree burns or a seared piece of meat. The outside is has no feeling. The nerve endings are damaged, destroyed. There is no feeling. And as we see our society globally now, we see that sin is being poured out and the days are here where evil will be called good and good called evil. So you have people who are sinning. They're going against the will of God. They're going against the, the commandments of God, the things that God hates. They're, they're embracing those things. And in fact, they're celebrating. They're becoming law. They're teaching their children to accept these. So in mankind's depraved and deceived mind, they're doing good. But in actual fact, they're stacking up sins against themselves. They don't even want to hear that what they love is sinful. They're, they're being told that it's good and they're running to it and embracing it. And in actual fact, when you open the word of God and you see the things that God hates and you look around and you see how mankind has just embraced them and celebrated them and made them law, those sins are going to be prosecutor when you stand before the great white throne judgment. Our sins are going to speak against us our unconfessed sins are going to speak against us. Conscience seared. Don't even feel bad for what we do anymore. And that's, that's a mankind thing that's happening. There's the book of words and secret words. Now, again, this is speculation. We don't really know what the books in plural are. But every word that comes out of our mouth, we will be accountable for. Those that are heard and those in secret. So we must make sure that our hearts, what is in our heart, comes out of our mouth is pure because it will speak against us just like how you know where these cell phones are listening to everything we say and at some point in time someone will be able to pull things back that's what the Lord will do it's almost like Satan's trying to copy God right <laughs> he's not a creator he can't create anything he can only imitate so here we have you know that the, our speech, our words are going to speak against us. And here we have it at the Great White Throne of Judgment. Then the Book of Public Works. Now, where the saints are judged on their works, what, what was in their motivation for their works, at the Great White Throne of Judgment is the evil works that will speak against the unsaved. Or even no works at all. Which, you, if you did not choose Christ, not choosing is a choice and you've chosen away from him and even they will speak against you because god has given us so many opportunities to choose him and to do his work that even our not choosing will speak against us we've got to be careful and make sure that we are choosing the lord and then the last is the book of life and that gets referred to we went through so many scriptures which we refer to the book of life but the thing that stood out the most is that the blotting out of the name and the way dr jeremiah described it is that there are those who believe and there is there are arguments for and against and that's not something that i i am going to get into but that god would have it that no one is lost that all would be saved 
And the question is asked that, is it possible for a Christian to have his name blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life? Now, again, we go through uh, scriptures and I'm looking for one in particular, Exodus 32, verses 32 to 33. This is Moses talking with God and I'm reading the New King James Version here. It says, Yet now if thou wilt forgive their sin for the people of Israel, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him I will blot out of my book. Now, Dr. Jeremiah likens the book of life as a city register where all that were born in that city, their names were written in the book, in a register. Now, if a citizen did something wonderful, their name was actually written in gold in the book. But if a citizen did something heinous, their name was taken out of the book. And they either lived in that city's grace or they had to leave and live somewhere else. So that is what he's likening it to. And he gave some scriptures and I'm gonna give this scripture and I'm gonna read it in two ways. It says, and this is 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us or patient. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And the Message Bible puts it like this. God isn't late with his promises, as some measure lateness. He is restraining himself because he doesn't want anyone lost. He's giving space, he's giving everyone a space and time to change. Now, there are arguments on either side as to whether God knows who will be saved and who will, or free will, free choice. I'm not gonna make a big deal in either direction. God knows. All I'm gonna do is make sure that I choose Jesus Christ and that I'm one of those who will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and be judged for my works in glorifying him and receive my reward. I'm not going to get into a big argument either way. And you have a choice. Make that choice. Choose Jesus Christ. Don't wait because you're being told about what will happen to those who do not choose Christ. And you don't want to be a part of that. There is no way back. Once you have chosen, you have chosen. And even here, Dr. Jeremiah talked about uh, degrees of punishment. And I'm actually going to find it. In Luke chapter 12, verses 47 through 48, there is a parable that is told. Luke chapter 12, verses 47 through 48, it says, And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him much shall be required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask more. Basically saying that if you know and you did wrong, you will receive a greater punishment than those who did not know and who did wrong. And so what you don't want to do is once you hear the word, you're accountable for what you hear. You hearing this message, you can't unhear it. And I know for someone who may be listening that it's piercing your heart right now, bothering you. I would encourage you to send us an email, swim at logic.bm. Ask the questions. What are you talking about? Why am I feeling this way? I want to hear more. We're happy to share with you because we don't want you to be in hell. In fact, the questions, the, the, the big question that came at the end of our study was, we don't want anyone to even have an opportunity if they are standing before the great white throne of judgment of a relative, a friend, church member, church member, to turn to us and say, why didn't you tell me about this? Why didn't you share the message with me? I don't want that on my part. That's why I'm so happy to even have this opportunity to share this in this manner. I don't know who's going to hear this message. We're, we're hearing from people that are hearing this that don't attend our church, how it's blessing them, and pray that they're making that choice for Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad we're able to do this. I don't want you to turn to me at any time, if there's ever a time that we meet on that side, 
and you just say, why didn't you tell me? This is what this whole podcast, this is what our teachings are all about. Sharing with you the message. So I'm going to end it here. It's it's not a it's not a happy message at all. My heart is heavy, you know, and I think about my relatives and friends who who need to hear this and who need to make that choice. And I pray that it's you. We even if you do do that, right now, ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart right now. Jesus, come into my heart. I know that I'm a sinner. I'm hearing this message and it's really bothering me. And I want to know more about you. I want to serve you. I want to turn from whatever it is that I'm doing right now. I confess my sins to you. And I ask for forgiveness, Lord, through the blood of Jesus. And show me the way that I can learn your word and embrace you and learn more about you so that I can stand before the judgment seat of Christ and be given a reward. I don't want to stand before the great white throne judgment. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I am a Christian. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That's all you need to do. Pray that prayer. Get into a Bible believing, Bible teaching, Bible preaching church. Learn the word of God. Learn what he loves. Learn what he hates. Shape your life in that way. Turn from sin and you can be assured a reward in heaven. So thanks so much. We would love, love, love to hear from you. And again, look up the podcast. Google, Spotify, Apple, and Stitcher. And have a listen to all of these insights to soon. Thanks so much. And may God bless you. Blessings. Bye-bye.